today we are going to be starting a new project. We are going to be spending some time using Google Draw to make a digital landscape. And we are going to be learning about and using atmospheric perspective, which is a, another way to create space on paper. And this time we're going to be learning all about monochromatic colors to make that happen. So let's take a moment and learn a little bit more about what atmospheric perspective is. What is atmospheric perspective? Atmosphere is the air around us and perspective is how we see things. So when we put it all together, it's basically how we see the air around us. So here's an example of atmospheric perspective. Things up front are really clear and far away, they're fuzzy. So the background ends up being blurry and flat without a lot of details. And the foreground that's closest to us is clear and we can see a lot more details. But why does this happen? Things like the weather, humidity, rain, fog, wind, and dust, and things like pollution, smog, fire, and smoke also make atmospheric perspective. So let's review. Atmospheric perspective is how we see the air around us. The background's blurry and flat, the foreground is clear and has details, and is caused by weather or other environmental factors. Hello, artist. Today we are starting a new project. We are going to be working on Google Draw and making a digital landscape. So let me show you what you're gonna need. You're going to head to your Google Classroom and look for the one titled Digital Landscape. So once you find that, click it, open. There are two things on there that you are going to be looking for. One is a Google form where I keep all of the videos like the one you're watching now. Some questions are on there as well. And then next to it, we have our digital landscape and it should say your name, digital landscape. And you're going to be looking for that. You're going to use that file for the entire project. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to open up both of them. So click them both open and they'll open up in two new tabs. And here is the video and some questions that you're going to need to answer after you finish watching this video. And then if you go back to the classwork tab and open up your digital landscape, that will open up in a new tab. And what you're going to do is you're going to flip back and forth between the video that you're watching now and your Google drawing and do it step by step. So as you're going, um, as you're working, pause the video, go to your Google drawing, complete the step. Back to the video, pause, play the video, watch it, understand it, watch it a couple times if you need to, and then click the tab and go back over to your Google drawing to do that step. All right, so that's how that's gonna work. Let me show you how we're gonna make a digital landscape. All right, artists, let's work on making a atmospheric perspective um, digital landscape using Google Draw. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna zoom out to about 50% so we can see all the way around our project. Just makes it a little bit easier to do that and the number might be different for you, but we wanna be able to see gray around everything. And the first thing we're going to do is go to the shape toolbar and click the rectangle and you're gonna click and drag. So click and drag. Um, if you let go too early, that's fine. You can grab the blue corners and drag it so it's just a little bit bigger than the checkerboard background. So the whole checkerboard background that we just saw, this one, all right, should be visible or should be, you shouldn't be able to see it. The blue square is going to cover up everything. And then we're going to go to our paint bucket tool and we're going to select the monochromatic colors that we want to use. So what monochromatic colors do you want to use? They're in nice little um, columns right here and you can pick the reds, the oranges, the yellows, the greens, the turquoises, the blue greens, the blue, the indigos, the purples, or red purples. You pick which one you want to work with. They're all monochromatic. Any column you pick besides maybe like this first one is kind of like orangey brown, but it might work good, um, will work for this project. I am going to stick with, um, go with the purple. And you're gonna pick the lightest one that you can. So it should be coming from this row. And this is going to be our background color. The farthest away, it's gonna look foggy and fuzzy. So we're gonna go with the lightest version of that monochromatic color that you pick. The next thing we're going to do is you are going to pick two choices. You have two choices. You can use the curve line tool 
um, to make rolling hills, or you can pick the poly line tool to make pointy mountains. I'm going to demonstrate um, the first layer of mountains or hills with both tools, but then you're going to pick which one you want. So watch both before you hop over to your Google drawing and add it. So let me show you both options first. The first one is the curvy tool, and this is going to make rolling hills like a field. And you're going to just click. Every time you click, it's going to drop a point where the line is going to bend. So that's one option, all right? And then you would drop it to the bottom and around the bottom of your project. Don't worry if it's outside, it's only gonna print what's, what is inside the printable area. And you would change this to the next value on the column that you are working with, okay? And then you would also change the border color to match that so we don't have a black outline. That's option one that is for hills if you want to do hills. So you're going to use the curve line tool for that. If that doesn't do it for you, let me show you how to, and you can try both just like I did and hit the back button to undo your steps. The next one's going to be the mountain tool. And this one, you are going to just make a mountain-like zigzag line. And remember, mountains aren't symmetrical, so there should be some asymmetry um, happening. It shouldn't be an absolutely perfect line here, but they should all have points to look like a mountain. And then you're going to go around the outside. It's okay if it's quick and get back to the start until you make that blue shape. Once you, once you, that um, shape fills in blue, you know that you've completed the shape and you can now use the paint bucket tool to fill it in. And once again, we're going to go one value darker on the gradient scale and make it a little bit darker. And I'm going to change my border, which is currently black, to match it as well. So you're going to pick which one you would like to work with. So pause the video, head over to your Google Drawing, and do that now. This is our first layer. It's the background of our mountains, the farthest part that we can see. So hit pause, hop over, and work on making yours. I'll see you in a second. Okay, welcome back. You should have picked a rolly hill for your landscape or you have picked a spiky mountain. And if you want to, you can always open up a new tab and look up rolling hills or look up mountains and get some inspiration from the shapes that are being used there as well. You got the computer, you might as well use it. All right, now we're gonna make our middle ground. This is gonna be the middle set of mountains or hills on our project. Once again, if you are doing hills, stick with hills. And if you're doing mountains, stick with mountains. Hills equal the curve tool. In mountains, you're using the polyline tool. So for my next set, I am going to click on the polyline tool and make another set of mountains. Go outside, back to where you started, it's going to turn blue once you've completed that shape. That's what you're looking for. Once you've completed the shape, then you can change the color inside. Right now, it just automatically defaults to that light blue. You're going to go a shade darker than what you did before. This is our middle set of mountains. And I changed the direction of the mountains so they're not like perfectly left to right. So I kind of made it slope down a little bit. That's an option for you. Or you can go directly left to right. That's your choice. Don't forget to change the border color. Transparent also works. That just gets rid of the line all together, but sometimes you might want that thickness there. So I'm just gonna keep it and make it match the color that I put in with a paint bucket tool. So that is mountain set two. It is in the middle. We're gonna do one more layer of mountain. So I want you to pause the video right now, head over to your Google drawing and add a second set of mountains or hills. All right. Ooh, welcome back. Let's get that final set of mountains in our project. Hill, um, hills are curved. Polyline is um, for the mountains. And let's add our last layer in there. This one's kind of hard to see. The purple and the blue uh, line is kind of tough to see. But I'm adding some mountains in there. All the way from left to right across my whole paper. Digital paper, I guess. Going outside my shape. 
my checkerboard back to where I started. And it looks like it turned blue. It didn't change the color of the inside. That's weird. But I'm going to go one level darker. Now, if you want to go super dark, you can and really make it pop. Um, you can pick the dark in there, really almost like a purpley black. And this would be the next one in line. But ooh, I think I really like that. That one really pops on there. And then I'm also going to change the border color as well. And then once I click off, I should not see any black line. So I can hit the arrow tool and that kind of shows me what it looks like without anything being selected. So pause the video and add your last layer of mountains. These are in the foreground and these are the closest ones to us. They're the most in focus and they're not foggy and fuzzy like the ones in the background. So head over mountains, hills. Okay, so I noticed that I have like a little arrow right here. That's the bottom of my paper. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to click my um, arrow select tool and I'm going to move my last set of mountains up a little bit because they're kind of off the printable part of the project. Um, and then I'll be able to um, move them there. You can do that with any of your mountains. You can move them and adjust them if you want um, and move them around a little bit just by hitting the arrow tool and then clicking and dragging or using the arrow keys on your keyboard will also move them around. So that is making the layers, the middle ground and the foreground on our project. And the next step I'm going to show you is how to add some details in there to make it look even more mountain like or hill like. OK, so the next thing we're going to do is we're going to get some help from Google Images and we are going to be looking for some silhouettes on um, that we can add to our projects. And silhouettes are completely solid images that are completely black. It looks like they are in shadow. Um, however, the word silhouette is kind of hard to type. So I'm going to show you another way to find some images on there because if you type it in wrong, you're not going to get what you want. So we're going to go to um, insert image and then search the web and a little window will pop up over here. Once we're over there, we're going to go in and we're going to type in black tree and then we're going to type in these three letters P and G. PNG means that it is transparent and you're not going to get a white box around every object that you insert. You're going to get a clear background so you'll be able to see the background. So if you're ever looking for something like that, type in the word PNG and that's what you um, are looking for. So type that in and now there are some trees to add in here. And if you're not a fan of trees, maybe you want to add a camp. Maybe you want to add some animals. Maybe there's something else that you want to add to your landscape. Keep it appropriate and, and um, for school, please. You can uh, click and choose what you want. Now, it's going to the most popular ones are going to be at the top. But don't forget to scroll through because there might be some more interesting ones near the bottom. And think about the space that you have made. What season is it? Um, what area is it in? Are you going to be going somewhere where there are, you know, um, pine trees all year long? Is it the winter and the trees are going to be bare? Or are the trees, you know, is it summertime and the trees are full of leaves? My project's purple. It's a cool color. It might make more sense to do some cool, um, like winter-like trees in my project versus like, you know, a palm tree, all right? If you did like a rolling hill scene and it's like orange and red, well, maybe a palm tree would work for your project and you would type in black palm tree um, for your part of the project. But I'm going to pick, uh, I think I'm going to do these uh, pine trees right here. Now, you might only be able to find one pine tree, but if I go back in and type in the word black pine tree, I might get some more options available to me. I can, uh, you click insert and then you're going to uh, use the corners and drag it around. And you can go um, shortcut with um, control copy or control C, control V will copy and paste it. Or you can go edit, copy, and your shortcut will be there. That's a shortcut on my computer. Edit, paste, and you'll get a second one. You can adjust the size of it so it's a little bit smaller. And we know that the smaller trees would be farther back and the bigger ones would be closer to us. You can go to format options if you want, and that would do some, we can do some size and rotational things there. We can flip it. So if you only maybe can find like one or two trees that you really like, you can at least flip it so it doesn't look the same exact tree pasted over and over again on your project. I'm going to go back into my image search just for some variety and see if I can find another type of tree just by changing the way I'm searching for it. So instead of a black tree, I'm going to go black pine tree. You might go black palm tree. Um, 
uh, black leafless tree. All right, however you're gonna type it in, you can choose how you want it to, um, to look or whatever details you were looking for. Ooh, here's a nice trio of trees. I'm gonna add that to my project. Click on it, click insert. It will take a minute and it will drop into your project. This one's taken a minute. There we go. And then I can shrink this down to make it the correct size that I need and add that in there. Now, if you wanna see how it's gonna come out and how it's gonna be printed, you can go file, print or use the print shortcut. And even if you don't have a printer, the printing option will be there and you can see how it's gonna look when you print it. So where are the bottom of bottoms of your trees um, going to be? The um, little print preview will come up and you'll be able to see the bottoms of your trees. Is everything on the page that you want to be on the page or do some things fall off the page that you need to move and adjust? Don't forget, you could put things in the air. You can make it um, you know, maybe a little more fantasy if you want with some dragons and some fun stuff up there, or you can stick to the classic mountain landscape that you are hoping to make. I can't wait to see how these come out. I think this is going to be a fun, uh, quick little, uh, Google draw project and I'll see you next week.